Hi, welcome to Adobe Photoshop. I'm your host, Rich Harrington, and today I have a technique for you called stealing the sunset. Now, we're going to take the colors of one sunset and map it to another image. I'm sure you've all been out there where you've captured the perfect photo, but the colors just don't come through the way you like. And then you've got another photo with perfect colors that you love, the rich oranges and blues and that sunset that you'd love to have captured. Well, I'm going to show you how you could steal the colors from one photo and map them to the colors in another. It's really quite simple, and it combines two techniques, a gradient map with a blending mode. Here's how. So I've got this photo opened here, and it's fine. Of course, there's all these power lines and other things in the way that we really don't want. And what I'm going to do is make a new gradient map. So let's go ahead here and click on the new adjustment layer icon and choose gradient map. Now it adds it and I'm just going to click OK. The reason why I clicked OK is so I could disable its visibility. Now the gradient map is in the layers palette but not actually affecting the image. This is important because we need to modify the gradient map to use the colors in the image down below. Double click here and then click on the gradient to open it up. Normally this gradient has two stops. What I want to do is add two more. So I'm going to click here and it adds a stop and notice we can adjust its location. So I'm going to go ahead and put this about a third of the way in at 33% and then click and add another one and set that to 66%. So now we have stops here dividing this into three zones here, here, and here. I'm going to go ahead and select the first color stop and double click and then come into my image and select something that's being used for the brightest area. I like this yellow here. Let me find a nice yellow and that looks pretty good. I'm just going to push that just a little bit more into the yellows there and that seems pretty nice. There we go. Next, I'm going to go ahead after another tone that's being used, and I'm going to grab this nice orange, this nice sort of reddish, pinkish orange, and use that color. Come down here to our next marker, and let's grab this nice purplish blue used in the sky. Click on our last one here for our shadowy area, and select a color here from the shadows. There we go, which is a black. Now if I click OK, that gradient map is added to the image. You can click Dither if you need to add a little noise, and that's fine. And when we turn that on, you'll see that it's mapping the colors in the image. Now don't worry how that looks right now, we can refine that pretty easily. I'm going to go ahead, move this image to the side, and just shift drag this over so it drops on to the next image. It drops it in and that did a pretty nice job, and what I'm going to do is grab my Move tool and just use the keyboard shortcut of Shift Plus to step through my blend modes. Multiply is doing a very nice job there, making it much more natural as those colors blend in. Remember, if you need to, just double click and you could tweak that gradient there. Of course, playing with this little mid slider here to affect where the split occurs. That's working pretty nice. Let's just open that up. And there you go. We've gone ahead and stolen the colors from one sunset and mapped them easily to another. If it's too intense, you can always lower the opacity as you need to to tone down the effect. But the before and the after, and that's doing a pretty good job. I hope you enjoy that technique and it further illustrates the idea that really the advanced techniques are simply basic techniques put together. If you want to steal a sunset from one photo to another, simply use a gradient map to capture those colors and then drop that over your next image. Play with the blend mode and the opacity to taste and all of a sudden you've matched the skies between the two images. I hope you enjoyed this week's edition of Understanding Adobe Photoshop. Remember we're available in both standard definition and high definition. Be sure to check us out in both iTunes and the Adobe Media Player. And if you'd like some more resources, visit our blog at rastervector.com.